there's there was four ingredients. We took one fourth out and put a stronger fourth in. It's the first time we've been a band in, in four equal components. It's about oh, now, it's not about then, that's over, it's dead, it's past tense, you know, you can't live in the past. It's just dry, it's just better. <laughs> better, faster, louder. I had one friend come down. He was the second guy. Second guy, and then Krabby came in. And we just never called anybody else back. Are you ready? Let me run a race across your throat Jump a child All right now Let them down long and shake for road It's definitely uh, made me expound more on, on what I can do like on records and, and whatever because he can play a lot of parts that Normally, I wouldn't, you know, put on records because on a live situation, you know, I wouldn't be able to cover all the parts. But with John playing guitar as well, it's 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 opened it up a lot. The whole chick party thing is is not part of what we're about anymore. And John sees life different than I see it. I, I'm, I, I see it through, uh, I, I'm very dark in the way I see things. What's that? Let me try this one. Let me try this one. This actually yeah. this kind of has this. Did you try this one on yet? No. Let me try that one. No, I like it like that. Yeah. Do you want to get in more over yeah. the droops or anything? Well, I like to change the up this, but I like the position where it is there. It's great. The yeah, big box. Box. big cardboard box. Guys, listen up, please. So you're all together in this, uh, in this environment, and you're into each other. You're into each other. What's going on between you? Me and Mick. Empty that out. You need some guitars. Yes. Okay. We need uh, my Thunderbird and Mix. What do you want for the cover, Mick? Okay. Here we go. Rolling playback. 
Looking for some extra chicken bones? Oh, you're right. There's the old in there. Vince Neal. Yeah. You know he's my best friend. You know that, right? Hey, uh, wait, one sec. No, he's in there. Hey, my scooter seats too. It does. Yeah, sure. Hey, buddy, what are you doing here? Just let me cruise in for a second, bro. Come on!
that I could present, man. out in the corner and uh, now he stayed the whole time in Vancouver 
and went over all of his vocal tracks and listened to things and had wanted to correct this and correct that and that was really neat. I even flew back to Vancouver for the mixes and like the band was going, what is this guy doing? Man? He's, he doesn't like the studio, there he goes. You know, I was just like really into this record. I did a lot of different parts, different guitar parts in the, on the album and stuff, which is really good because I've been wanting to do that for a while. He worked with Bob Rock, you know, our new producer, and Bob really pulled a lot of things out of him that ourselves or another producer couldn't because Bob was a guitar player. And there's, I guess there's something about being a guitar player on the same wavelength and, and um, he's just pulling stuff out of Mick at, like, like tricks out of a hat, man. He'd tell him, Mick, try this. When he'd just be playing it and we'd go, wow, yeah, that's great. I don't think really any of us really thought about being as big as maybe, you know, people think we are. Everything's turned out way more than I thought it was gonna be. When we made our first record and we were playing like, I mean, when we played the Whiskey A Go-Go in the Starwood back in 1981, I thought, wow, we made it. This is a, wow. My, my buds were coming from school and like they're out there and I was playing, you know, wow. I thought I made it. I had no idea that this was the rest. I mean, I had no, no idea that we were going to be playing arenas, Russia, not a clue. I knew uh, when we started playing and the first live thing that we did at the Starwood in 1981 and the reaction of the people, I knew this was going to be a mega band. We really don't think of ourselves as a big band at all. It's really funny because like even when we play, like on tour now, you know, the shows have been going great, but we always sit back and we ask each other, we go, like Rich, our tour manager, we go, dude, is anybody gonna show up tonight? God, I hope some people show up tonight. You know, we always say that. We're bombing, man. We're bombing, huh? We suck. <laughs> Let's shake it up, boys! Oh, nice, nice. This is MTV yeah. Music Television, uh, live in stereo. I'm delighted to have your company this evening and delighted to have Jimmy hanging in with us as we present part three of our feature rockumentary on Jimmy's favorite band, <coughs> almost Motley Crue. I love this band. Welcome to the world of a Motley f Crew. I mean, Vince says, welcome to the world of Motley Crue. This is our world, and our world is wild, man. Motley Crue have come a long way over the course of their nine-year career, from the metal clubs of Hollywood to their current world tour, which finds them armed with 11 semi-trucks worth of light, sound, and theatrical gadgetry. The emphasis, however, is, as always, on sound. Motley Crue takes the stage with 110,000 watts of power backing them up. I have 32 amps and, you know, cabinets and heads, and Nick has 32 cabinets and heads. You don't need that much sound to do an arena. And we have, like, double the amount that we need because we want people to go away going, I'm nauseous from the bass drum. Another crucial element of the Motley Crue stage show is pyrotechnics. The group started out experimenting with homemade effects, even lighting their clothes on fire. But now, of course, they can afford their own team of pyrotechnicians to choreograph all the theatrical mayhem. If you're ever having, like, one of those nights where you're going to be a little tired, you're going, oh, God, I'm dying up here, you know? i got no more energy. My third wind is gone. And the pyro goes, boom, boom. you go, yeah! 
Motley Crue's current light show, one of the biggest on the boards right now, includes a laser light opening that effectively encapsulates the band's history. We have this uh, screen thing that comes down and, and lasers like tell the story, creates all these images and stuff, which we kind of ripped off from Neil Diamond. <laughs> Another staple of metal shows, and therefore Motley Crue shows as well, is the inevitable drum solo. Tommy Lee has attempted to take these percussive interludes into a more theatrical direction, first with his tilted drum riser on the 1984 Theater of Pain tour, then with his gravity-defying revolving drum kit on 1987's Girls, Girls, Girls outing. For the current Dr. Feelgood tour, he naturally felt that he had to top himself. And yes, he did. Drum solos are just like, it's just a waste of concert time, you know? People came there to hear music, it's like, okay, yeah, okay, man, wow, that guy's good, he's technical, ooh, wow, ooh. You know, it's like, who cares, man? These people came to hear music, I figured I would put together something that everyone would enjoy, some music, some old classic stuff. Along with his distinctive drum concepts, Lee also displays an unusual close sense, or lack thereof. I guess I'm an exhibitionist. <laughs> Our audience is borderline out of control all the time. We call them crew heads. They're just like really diehard fans. Motley fans are still going to be Motley fans, whether we're number one or, you know, 101. Parents are always saying, oh, you know, they're just, just dumb kids. That really pisses me off. They're not dumb kids. I wasn't a dumb kid. Just because you like rock and roll doesn't make you stupid or insignificant. People always send me like, you know, where their 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 state with their personalized license plate, you know, that says Motley or you know something like that on it. Those are like really cool. I think some girl uh, in Texas gave me uh, an Explorer, Gibson Explorer. It was, it was a real shock. I have a tattoo on my arm of Mighty Mouse, so I constantly get um, Mighty Mouse stuff. Stickers, um, Mighty Mouse pens, Mighty Mouse towels, Mighty Mouse. I mean, I got all that stuff. The best feeling I ever get is when I look down and I'll see somebody singing the song back to me, word for word. I hear Vince in the background singing it, and I'm watching this kid, and he's singing it to me, and he knows every word. And I'm, man, that, that rocks my world. From the beginning, so that if, if something ever happened to one of us, that that would be the end of Motley Crue because Motley Crue is, you know, Nicky, Tommy, Nick, and me. And talk about four opposite type of people. You know, you would you couldn't plan four more different type of people, and it's it's hilarious. You know, that ten years later we're like this. I couldn't even imagine playing with somebody else. You know, I'd rather just call it quits. If the day ever comes we stop making albums, yeah, you'll be able to like run into us all in the corner somewhere when we're 90 and we'll all still be hanging out together. Mick will be 95. But <laughs>